It's time once again for the Passion to Succeed podcast, where we explore the traits, mindsets, and attitudes of passionate and successful individuals. This show is for anyone who wants to make a difference, make more money, learn from the greatest minds, and discover how to be more successful in all you do and doing it with a pure passion to succeed. Here's your host, serial entrepreneur, successful author, and the world's most passionate master coach, Craig White. Welcome and hello again. I'm Craig White and this podcast show is proudly brought to you by Passion to Succeed. I've got a question for you guys. How do you find motivation? Where does your motivation originate? Where does it come from? So look, on today's show, we have an amazing guy, an incredible guy, a great friend of mine, a mentor, uh, Michael Katka. You know, Michael has, has had a massively positive influence on my life over the last 15 years while, I guess, partnering together and achieving together over, over many years now. From challenge to travel, from leadership to pure inspiration, Michael has this charismatic, uplifting influence on thousands of people throughout the world today. And it's my absolute pleasure to have him with us this, the, the, today. <laughs> um, look, he's a two-time successful author. In fact, one of the books I want to talk about today, Motivation from a Tortured Mind, it, it, it's absolutely sensational. Do you know, it's probably one of the most challenging uh, and changing books that I've ever read. It's, it's made me become more and learn more, more than any other book. And more recently, he's launched a book called Tortured Love, a book that I'm yet to devour, but I'm sure it's as passionate as his first. So look, I'm yet to personally devour that, yet motivation from a tortured mind really does capture Michael's core values of compassion, integrity, and a desire to have a positive influence on others. So welcome to today's show, my friend. Thank you very much for joining us. How are you? Ah, oh, fantastic to be here, Craig. It's such a privilege to be able to speak to you and speak to everybody else. Really appreciate this opportunity. And as you quite rightly said, we've known each other for many years. But in return, you know, you've motivated and inspired me along the way. And for many years, you've mentored me. So it has been a very symbiotic relationship we have. And it's a very powerful one where two people can mentor each other and influence each other positively. It's one of the greatest relationships you can have. So a thank you for the invitation. I really appreciate it. Oh, likewise, Michael. And I think, do you know that I think for me, the quality of our life does lie within the quality of our relationships. And I, I guess our relationship not only influences us, but I like to feel creates an environment to influence others, which I guess our environment that we find ourselves in is important to our success. Would you agree? Totally. One hundred percent. You know, not only do we have that symbiotic relationship between each other, which is just amazing, and there's so few of those exist, but if you find them and stick to them, because it does influence the environment around you, the power and the passion that we can create from the relationship we have is absolutely outstanding. And you know as well as I do, we have proven that time and time and time again, and we will continue to do that as the relationship nurtures and grows. No, absolutely agree with that. Oh, wonderful. Hey, look, Michael, I know you're a really busy guy and, you know, leading thousands of people and, and traveling the world and really looking for more opportunities to, to, to develop and grow. I mean, dare I ask, where in the world are you today? Are you in the UK? Are you traveling? No, I'm in the UK today. Traveling is done for this month. <laughs> and we're, we're only halfway through the month, but there's a lot more travel on the cards. And as you quite rightly say, you know, everything I do is based around people. But today, firmly situated in the UK, which I might add is the greatest country in the world, if you don't mind me saying so. <laughs> well, mate, you share a passion of mine, very patriotic. And Joe, I heard... Uh, Something recently, I'm not sure where, but something come into my environment and it was just talking about, um, I, I was looking at, you know, obviously the size of the world. And I think it was really on the back of, you know, what's happened with, you know, the Brexit recently. And it was just people were talking about, you, you know, we're probably only the third, you know, biggest economy in the world, I believe, if, if I'm correct there. And yeah, actually, we're such a small island. And I think sometimes we, we can almost forget how small we are. And I look at what people achieve in the UK, you know, entrepreneurs, business owners, um, people that are looking to be passionate about success, I guess, in all different walks of life. And I, I look what they achieve in the UK. And I thought to myself when I heard that, God, 
we're such a small island, yet such a powerful nation of people that can influence the world. Think about, you know, the growth worldwide that people may be able to have when they think about the size of the world. And I think it just it impacted me to think, actually, we're so strong and so powerful and have such a large contribution, but from such a small island. It's amazing, really. Totally agree with you, Craig. I mean, I'm very patriotic about our country. I mean, you're absolutely right. We have a track record and a history of massive, massive achievement. You can, can go back as far as you want in history, and our country has always been at the helm of everything that's great in the world. And no matter where we are today with whatever has happened with Brexit and whatever does happen, we will still be amazing one way or another. We are a country of survivors. This country's track record in achievement is unbelievable. I'm incredibly patriotic about this country. And through all the travels of them throughout the world, I will still say that this is where home is, and not only is this where home is, but I can proudly say that it is the greatest country in the world, and it truly is. Hey, do you know what? I, I agree, and I think, do you know, I'm no politician, uh, uh, and, you know, I, I, I'm passionate about connecting with the world, and I think we have a history of leadership. You know, as you, as you said, as, as long as we go back, we, we have a real strong history of, of leadership and, and of achievers. And I think we need our leaders to come together now. And I think we've got an opportunity to connect with the rest of the world. And we are a small island. But do you know what? This is a world without borders nowadays. And do you know what? I'm glad you're based in the UK because we've got a great line. Um, but hey, look, guys, one of the reasons I wanted to bring Michael to our show today is he is without doubt certainly one of the most passionate and transformational people I know. And I feel we can delve into his mind a little bit today, maybe some of his philosophies of how he continues to be one of the most passionate people based in being passionate to succeed that I've known for the last 15 years. But firstly, Michael, what, what I want to do, and obviously knowing you as I do, um, and, and having read your book, I know a little bit about your story and, and where you come from, but tell us a little bit about, about your books. I mean, what, what was the passion? I mean, you had this reason why an author, and in your, your book, kind of Motivation from a Tortured Mind, you talk about um, your song and how someone's song is, is influential in their, their actions. I mean, what's your song? Why did you become an author? Well, having studied English and psychology, I was always aware that everyone, and I mean absolutely, Absolutely everyone has a book inside them, a book that would influence people, that can inspire people and motivate people. Everybody has a story that will affect somebody else. Then having worked in personal development for over 25 years now, it was personal development added to the fact that I know everybody has a book inside them, allowed me to set the goal to write because I thought to myself, hold on. I sleep five hours a night. I'm busy 24 hours a day, seven days a week doing something. When and where am I going to squeeze in a book? And then I thought, hold on a minute. Personal development teaches us to set goals and to have deadlines. So I decided 1,000 words every single week without fail for 57 weeks. And that's exactly what I did. Come rain or shine, come night or day, I got 1,000 words done every single week for a solid 57 weeks, irrespective of where I was in the world or what I was doing. Hence came the first book. And that first book is a personal journey, but outlined to inspire others with everyday happenings. Yes, there are some happenings in there that are very unique to me, but each chapter in that book has some form of inspiration where people can look upon it and think, you know, I can relate to that, I can work with that, and I can grow with that. And that was the motivation behind the book, the fact that everybody has a book inside them, the fact that setting a goal to write, yes, I could do that because I know anything is achievable, including writing a book, even if you have no time to write it. And as basic story that had inspiration in every chapter to try and influence people throughout their own lives. And that really was it, Craig. But most of all, I'll tell you, most of all, it was knowing that if you set the goal to do something that seems impossible at first, 
it will get done. So you have to believe in it. You have to break it down. And then you have to stick to your deadline. And as I've said, my deadline, come rain or shine, night or day, was 1,000 words a week without fail. And I did that solidly for 57 weeks. And there was the first book. And I, you know, I can honestly say I'm as busy as you are, Craig. You know, we are busy 24 hours a day. But when you want to do something and you want to do it badly enough, you will get it done. And this is what you mean when in the book you, you talk about your song um, and, you know, how finding, I guess, your, your purpose, your reason why. Um, which you know clearly, clearly you've done. It, it's amazing. I was, I was um, thinking only today when I was in the gym this morning that, you know, and I guess the the personal development journey that we've been on, and you, you're almost confirming what I was thinking today. Well, you are 100 percent actually. And it was just talking about um, or, or or thinking about how self-made millionaires, some things I've learned in the past, how they've literally they they find their song, as you would call it, their yes. their reason why they achievers are goal setters. And, and obviously yeah. you've set that goal, you've chunked it down, you've got a plan. And then, as you said, you've worked on it day in, day out uh, to hit your goal. And I, I think and I guess that's what achievers do. Absolutely agree. You know, that having your own song simply defined is your reason why. A lot of people never find their actual reason why. I know, Craig, you know, and every entrepreneur in this world knows that your reason why is your golden key to the kingdom. When you have your reason why, you can open any door in the world because that reason why pushes you through. It pulls you through. It takes you where you want to be no matter come rain or shine, night or day. You will get to that destination because that is your song. Your song is your reason why. The hardest and most profitable exercise you will ever do is work out your reason why. If you can work out why are you doing what you're doing, why do you want what you want, if you can work that out, you will have the golden key to the kingdom which will open any door for you. And that is your song. So, so from, from your song perspective, I mean, what's your in, intentions now? I mean, you've wrote your second book, um, Tortured Love, and um, this is more of a novel. Um, I mean, t- yeah. tell, me, tell me a little bit about this book, because... Sorry, yeah, so Tortured Love is, is a novel, um, and it's, again, a novel based around life, death, and hope. Three areas that we all witness some point in our lives. We all witness life. We all witness death. But we all must have an element of hope. So the story is based around that. I'm currently writing my third book, which is a romantic novel called Make My World Complete. Again, a very different slant. Because I have learned that you can do anything you want if you put your mind to it. So writing became a passion, even though I would have been the first person in the queue to say, I haven't got time to write. And I can now tell you, Craig, there's no such thing as not having time. When you want to do something bad enough, you will find the time. But my passion, really, beyond writing, is simple in one word. My passion is people because I have learned that if you, and we'll talk more about this later, but if you support and build people, you can achieve anything in the world. You support and you build people. Help people realize their reasons why. And you will build an empire in anything you want to do. So I've worked in industries that only involve working with people. And that is what I enjoy the most, writing books and working with people. Joe, it's interesting that you're, 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 you're obviously your intentions and your commitment to write this third book. I mean, obviously, it's clear that do you know, I, I guess when you move, you, 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 you create motion, which unleashes emotion. And I guess you've got yourself, you've set that goal, you've got your first book under your belt. And I guess success is a habit and you're in the, you've implemented the habit of fulfilling your song and making an influence. And, and uh, clearly your, your third book's bringing out the, uh, the old romantic in you, I, I, I gather. <laughs> It is, it is indeed. It's a collection of poetry and, um, you know, general romantic happenings with the usual Michael Katkar twist in them. <laughs> Happy days. You, talking of twists, you know, guys, you, you certainly, again, I need to devour tortured love, but motivation from, from a tortured mind. I mentioned it earlier. It's one of the most challenging um, and aspiring books that, that I've ever read. And what I mean by that is it, Michael takes you on this journey and, 
on occasions I was thinking, hang on a minute, where are we going with this? And it's, you're almost taking you into these depths of the unknown and then all of a sudden he, he hits you with this point, this poignant point that really hits you and makes you stand up and go, yes, I need to develop my song. Yes, I need to understand. And I guess in it, one of your messages in the book, you talk about, um, you know, the, the importance of, you know, people concede they struggle or fight. Um, and I guess too many people concede rather than fighting for what's right. Absolutely, Craig. I mean, people, you know, what I mean by concede is that they will give in to whatever is thrown at them. So when they have something negative thrown at them, something that they didn't want, something they didn't appreciate, they just accept it and take it. And that's what I call concede. And so many people, for whatever reason, it's not a criticism of these people, it's that so many people will just give in at the first hurdle or the first thing that hits them. They will just give up and accept whatever's coming their way. Um, then you get a set of people who struggle. And the reason they struggle is because they don't have a plan to get out the situation they're in, but they just do day-to-day -day routine things to try and get out the situations they find themselves in. And you know as well as I do, Craig, that if you want something extraordinary, if you want something out of the ordinary, then you have to put an extraordinary effort in. Because if you put an ordinary effort in, if you put an everyday effort in, or as you would say, Craig, if you don't put sweat equity in, you'll only get mediocre. You will only get that. So the only way to go forward and to achieve those huge things that you dream of is to fight for them, is to work over and above everybody else, is to go that extra mile. Because as you know, Craig, there is no competition in that extra mile. You know, it's all there available for you. So if you want more, you can't just concede and accept what's coming your way. You've just got to say, no, this is not the way it's going to be. You can't just carry on struggling doing everyday routine because everyday routine will get you everyday results. You literally have to fight day and night for what you want. And you know what, Craig, every single time, and you're a great testimony to this, that fight is always worth it because you will get what 95% of people conceded for and struggled for, but you will get it. You will be the 5%. I, do you know what, mate? I completely agree, Michael. I think that passion to fight, it's almost the fight for the right to win. And I think yeah. too many people focus sometimes, I guess, on the outcome. Whereas, do you know, I think you, you, that, that focus of, of having a great day, you know, working hard, as you said, fighting day and night, for what's right for you, for for your song, for your for your plan, and I think if people can focus, because the outcome's irrelevant, because at the end of the day, it's what we say to ourselves that counts. And if we can look in the mirror at the end of every day and say, "I've won," "I've left my rubber on the tarmac," "I've left my sweat in the game," because I've won regardless of the outcome, because I've delivered my contribution, my focus, and and my level of activity, I guess. But, yeah, absolutely. But then I guess, you know, focus, Michael, and I'm sure you agree, you know, people more often than not might not get what they want, but they'll get what they expect. They get what they focus on. And too many people, are, I think, need to understand that life is about ups and downs. You know, we're going to have challenges. We're going to have ordeals. We're going to have elation. We're going to have happiness. Um, I guess, you know, the ups and downs of life, that well, they're part of the cycle of nature from the way we breathe, from the night and day, the way the sun, you know, moves the world, you know, the, the oceans, etc. Everything has a, has a positive and a, a negative. There's always clarity through contrast. And I think if people can focus on their, what they want, for example, if they focus on the depths of despair, the ups and downs of life will probably take them there. Yeah, if they focus on elation, achievement, a success, and maybe removing themselves and having an ambition greater than themselves, maybe an ambition for people, which is what you're really passionate about, then the ups yeah. and downs of life would take them there too. Absolutely, Craig. You know, when I think about you and what you've achieved, for me, one sentence always sums it up. You were willing to do the things that other people found easy not to do. 
you did all that extra to get to where you are. And you've had a phenomenal life and career so far. And I still believe it's only a beginning because you did over and above what anybody else did. You did all the things that people found easy not to do. And that's got you where you are. That sums you up in one sentence because you did that and you did it with pride and you did it ambition and you did it with my favorite word gusto well mate let, let's let's look at that because you know I, I have the complete same vibe and, and feeling towards yourself because i think the influence you have the the way you impact and uplift people your, your passion for people first um is why i believe you continue to succeed you continue to influence thousands of people on a daily basis and and do you know what? Not many people have that leadership role, and it and it is a it's a role of responsibility. It's a role of of leadership, and I guess in a way you're a prime example of a, a leader of one is a leader of many. If you can't lead one, you can't lead any. You know, you're you've led yourself to you know chase your song to become a a successful author on two occasions. You know, writing you know two great books and and on onto your third already. Um, uh, I'm sure that will continue onto your fourth and your fifth because not only can you influence people in your environment, but I guess your books enable you to influence many more people worldwide. And if people can grasp the concepts, I really do think they can change their life because how we change is, is how we succeed. And you're a, a, a real prime example of that entrepreneurial spirit, that ambition to be passionate about people. So you talked about people earlier. You talked about your yeah. passion for people. Where, where, does that, where does that come from? Is it something that, you know, you've developed over years? Because I know you've studied people. I know, you know, you, you've studied mem many areas in life from, you know, from people to success to obviously literature. Um, but, you know, where, where does your passion for people originate? Well, you know, it's various areas. Yes, I studied, I studied in depth in various facets of psychology. But, you know, it was during my career, my very, very early career. And I remember a manager saying to me, it's the only valuable thing this manager said, but it's very valuable. He said, no matter what you do in life, no matter what job you do, what career you follow, what company you work for, no matter what organization you run, always identify great people, support them, and build them. Always do that throughout your life. Identify, support, and build. Do you know what, Craig? He didn't even tell me why that was such a good idea. I learned why that was a good idea. He just said, always find people that you can support and build. So in years gone by, then I learned why that was so important because... If you can nurture and identify and support and build people, no matter what company you're in, no matter what organization you run, no matter what self-employed situation you're in, you will always grow as a result of that. And that brings me on to Zig Ziglar's most famous quote. You know, if enough people get what they want, you'll get everything you want. So always focus on identifying, supporting, and building people. It's something I learned very early in my career, even at the point where I didn't even understand the reasons why you had to do that, but now I do. Because if you can help people get somewhere, you will get anywhere you want. Focus on people, focus on building them, because so many people in this world do need support. Do not forget that people need to be supported. There is greatness in everybody, but not everybody ever locates that greatness because the rest of the world goes around telling people they're not good enough, they're not great enough, they can't achieve it. So if you can go along and identify that in people, you can tell them they're great enough, you can support them to be brilliant, you can continue to build them until they reach their goals, then you have achieved one of the greatest ambitions any man should have, any person should have, and that is to build support and identify people for growth and as I said I learned that very early on. Hey well look I'm so pleased that you had the faith to to, to listen and, and I guess understand it as you went along for experience I guess the one thing that you're unable to give us is is experience however you know your, your words are wisdom and, and for me this is something that you are great at you're you're great at um, finding out what it is 
that can impact people. You're great at uplifting people and finding out what their strengths are and reminding them. And I, and I agree, you know, people throughout the world are, are not told how great they are often enough. I mean, how often are people appreciated? How often are, are people, you know, how, how often do we feel grateful about others? And one of the things I guess I've started to, to implement in my life, and I know it's something you do, and uh, and it's certainly inspired me over the years watching you and, and seeing the impact you have on others, is, you know, it's that philosophy of having a positive influence. I'm not sure where it came from, but we all uh, know the cliche, if you've got nothing nice to say, avoid saying anything. So for me, it's about, you know, leaving every encounter, leaving every you know, impression or every opportunity with a good vibe, a, a good feeling, you know, even if it's going out of your way just to hold the door open for somebody or if, if it's going out of the way just to say somebody, they look fantastic today, you know, because I think people are not surrounded in that positive bubble enough, which, you know, a lot of people laugh at me because they're like, Craig, you live in your positive bubble. I love my positive bubble, you know, because it just doesn't penetrate. Um, but I think if I, one of the things I think you are fantastic at and certainly I've taken leave from over the years is is having that positive influence on people and and making sure people are aware of that because it's not told often enough thank you Craig thank you appreciate that so when when yeah. we look at yeah. highly passionate people yourself included yeah how what what I guess there's many traits of passionate people you know many habits you know how do you stay so energetic, so uplifting, so positive. I'm sure you have your times where you have your own time where you can chill out with a lovely bottle of wine and read a book, <laughs> write a book. Um, but when I see you and when people hear you and people listening to this show, you have an energy in your voice and you have a, an, an impactful way of influencing people. How do you stay on course? How do you stay passionate about people regardless of the outcome? Okay, Craig, I mean, on a very personal level, number one, it is to understand that reason why I would say it's paramount in absolutely everything you do and everything you tackle and every single day. So number one, understand your reason why. This is not a flippant number one. It is the basis of everything you will achieve. Understand your personal reason why. That will be the golden key to the kingdom. That's number one. Number two, fully understand and accept. We have two dates. The date we're born and the date, unfortunately, dying. Do you know what? In between that is a short dash of time. Two dates and a dash of time. That's all we have. If you don't understand that your time is limited, then you won't make the most of it. So understand we have a small dash of time. And in that dash of time, you're either going to concede, struggle, or fight for everything you deserve. So for me, I understand that facet every single day that I had a date when I was born. The date when I go, I don't know when that is, but in between is a very short dash of time. So I have to make the most of every single moment. And that does keep me uplifted. Thirdly, for me personally, it's all about self-competition. I've never competed with anybody else. Never, ever have I ever competed with anybody. It's all about self-competition, being better for myself, being better than I was yesterday, being better than I was last year, being better than I was five years ago, with the promise that tomorrow I'll do even better than today. That self-competitive edge gives you exactly that. It gives you the edge, but it's competition with yourself. You know, make yourself better. I don't care about how anybody else is doing except the people I'm supporting. Of course, I care about them, but I don't compete with people. I don't compete with companies. I only compete with myself to make myself better. So one, understand your reason why and the golden key to the kingdom. That will open more doors than you can ever imagine. Number two, accept the two dates and a dash of time and that dash of time is just that it is it's just a dash and if you are you've got to make the most of it you either concede you struggle or you fight for the time that you're given number three self-competitiveness compete against yourself you know i will regularly go to bed thinking you know what today wasn't good enough tomorrow will be better regularly do that and if you can compete with yourself you will continue to grow now 
if I was able to add a fourth, it would be to consistently do what I've already said, and that is to support people to greatness. To support as many people as you possibly can to greatness. Identify, support, and build. Those four things are my personal keys to success, and I stick by them every living day. Hey, look, mate, I'm buzzing listening to that because I just think what what a great kind of overview of, of your passions and your purpose and, and your song to influence. I mean, that philosophy of, of being, you know, self-competitive, I love it because too many people, I guess, compete with others when it's about focusing on, on our game, what's important to us. And as you rightfully said, being better today than we was yesterday, being better today than we was in the past. And for me, you are certainly one of the best of the best, my friend. And I'm really appreciative of your time today. I know you are busy making a difference, influencing, planning and, and goal achieving and, and leading the way for thousands of people uh, throughout the world today. So look, thanks very much for your time. A great finish to a show. Four cracking points that I believe if you guys can listen to Michael, learn from Michael and, and follow his lead, you can have a really, really exciting future. And do you know, it's remembering how we change is how we succeed. I mean, this is obviously a fantastic show. We're talking to passionate people and we've had the passionate Michael Katkar today. And uh, I want to thank you for joining us. Um, thank Michael very much. I appreciate your time, buddy. And um, I'm sure maybe we'll have Michael on again when he uh, unle unleashes his romantic, passionate novel on us. Uh, God help us. <laughs> but um, I'll, I'll look forward to that. And um, Michael, again, thanks very much. Hope you guys have, have really enjoyed today's show. Um, remember them four key points. Why, dash, self-competitive and make a difference in other people's lives and your life is most likely to change for the better forever and I wish you all the best and uh, have a passionate day. Thanks, Michael. Thanks a, lot. Thanks a lot, Craig. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, we would appreciate it if you would like. Most people share through social media. Then subscribe, rate and provide a review over at iTunes and SoundCloud. That's all for today. Thank you for joining us. The Passion to Succeed show is brought to you by passiontosucceed.com. Get over to the website, subscribe and join the community of passionate people.